All right. Well, you are about to see a great interview with uh, a great woman over at a great Vashon Island farm. And I'm going to look, the introduction there is all set up, but I made some mistakes and Laura wanted me to correct them because we don't want to get false information out there. And these are all mistakes I made because I'm a dope. Okay. So first of all, Laura is not the director over there. She is the equine coordinator. So when I introduce her as the director, just think, oh, there's a dope. She's the equine coordinator. I know that. So make sure you know that she's the equine coordinator. And then there's several times where we talk about either tours going on or you can get manure or uh, uh, the foster program and all those things change from time to time. The foster program is currently all used up. So point is Emerald City Pet Rescue.org. Emerald City petrescue.org is where you can go for the most up-to-date information about tours, about anything having to do with the farm. You want to check it out there before you go, oh, but Aaron said on this video, no, no, no. This is to let you know there's something like that exists on the island and it's totally cool and it's great. And emeraldcitypetrescue.org will have all the current information if you want to check it out. Nothing else? Check out this great interview. What is happening with the Vashon farm scene? Let's check it out. Today, we're looking at the Ghost Owl Farm. Now, it's not your ordinary farm. They don't grow produce here. This is an animal rescue farm. This is a farm animal rescue farm. Actually, it's totally badass. They got 100 animals there. And it's a great uh, interview with Laura uh, Wigglesworth Powers, who is wonderful. She's uh, the managing director of the farm. I think that's her title. Um, but it's a totally beautiful farm. And it's just, it's such a fabulous idea and a fabulous place to take care of animals, be, you know, that have ended their useful life as a farm animal, but still have a lot of years left in them. And this is like a retirement community for llamas and goats and mini horses and horse. It's just great. And small plug, my daughter works there. So ready to check it out before you get there. My name's Aaron Hinden. I'm with Christine and Company over at EXP Realty. And this is everything about Vashon, everything you need to know about living on Vashon. If you want to know anything about what it's like on the island, I'm your dude. Okay. You want to hit me up anytime here on YouTube, send me a message, comment. I will get back to you and answer any question you have about living over here. I'd love to talk to you now without much further ado, without any further ado, Laura over at Ghost Owl Farm. <laughs> All right, Laura, thank you so much for making this time. I love it. I love that we got it worked out. I'm excited to do it. I love uh, this place. Excellent. All right. Well, tell me about it. It's the Owl Farm. Ghost Owl Farm. Owl, Ghost Owl Farm. And it's a sanctuary yes for retired animals yeah we've got some young ones too though right. yeah so, so emerald city pet rescue uh -huh. is our organization and um vivian goldblum actually started over town 10 years mm -hmm. ago with dogs and cats um, but she started the equine program about five years ago and didn't have this facility she found this property in 2017 Mm -hmm. um, and it's been a horse property, you know, the people who've been here right. a long time, they all know, they come in and ask me about the people that owned it before, but they cleared out the old arena and built this barn here that's behind us now. Um, yeah, so about five years ago, she started rescuing horses mm -hmm. and started building this facility and the animals got here in uh, summer of 2021. Wow, all right, and so where do the animals come from? Okay, that's the big question. Yeah. Like so a lot of them have come from kill pen auctions. Um, they're no longer of use to their owners. I don't know what a kill pen auction is. So. Okay. So the uh, there are auctions all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them in certain states. Uh, Texas, Washington. Uh, I'm not sure about California. Uh, but there's there's quite a few locations where they have these auctions and they're people who no longer have use for the animals and they will sell them for whatever they can get and then they get auctioned off and sent out of the country for meat. Um, so, so mostly the people buying them are out of the country. Yes, yes. But you will find if you start following equine rescues mm -hmm. online, um, many of them go around to these auctions and try and save the animals that still have 
a lot of life left in them. Um, um, but there's a lot that go into these auctions that, you know, they can't be ridden anymore for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And, and, but they've still got 10, 15 good years left. And so we've kind of got a retirement home for those guys. <laughs> but we also take in relinquishments. So we have a small percentage of animals that have come here um, because something has happened in the life of the owner mm-hmm. or the life of the animal and they're unable to either afford the costs associated or unable to carry out the work that comes along with owning these kinds of animals. Um, and they will come to us and um, ask if we can take them in. We're packed right now though, so it's really, and most rescues are. Right. It's kind of the nature of rescues right now um, with hay costs and supply chains and all of that. People have a hard time. Yeah, good, so tell me about what packed is. So tell me what, who's here? So we've got almost 100 animals here. 40 of them are full-size horses, and um, 37 of them live inside the barn at night and get turned out during the day um, into pastures with their friend groups. Mm-hmm. I, I taught for 22 years before I came here, and um, it's kind of reminiscent of teaching middle school with the behaviors and the, the way they'll instigate things with each other. So our supervisors are really good about reading the animals and their relationships, mm-hmm. and so they go out for the day. Um, and then come back in. We have five um, full-size horses that live outside round the clock. Um, a couple of them were rescues that were outside and they hate the barn, uh-huh. so we don't want to bring them in. And um, the others just like being out and free and they're much happier and behavior is much improved when they're out like that. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so that's, that's the horses. So those are the big horses. And then we've got the minis. We've got about 20 minis. Uh, that includes mules, mini horses, and donkeys. Um, I'm kind of the donkey person here. Um, I'm actually fostering a donkey and a mini horse from here, and I it's the best. And thing when you the say world. you're fostering, I mean you have it at your house, yeah. or you have it at your home. Yeah. So we we do. Fo- I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that. But we do foster programs here, and so the animals, everything is paid for, health care, food, um, hoof care, all of that, and then you just provide the daily care and the love. Um, and the spot. And the spot, yeah, yeah. So it's on your property. Oh, yeah. isn't that great? Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, but sorry, I digress. No, you're Donkeys, not I get distracted. That's, <laughs> That's great. All right, well, come donkeys. back. I definitely want to hear about the foster program. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you got, you got 47 horses? 40, 40 full horses. size, about 20 of the minis. 20 minis. So those are all the equine. And then we mm-hmm. have nine goats, mm-hmm. five sheep, six pigs, five cows two alpacas and a llama isn't that great yeah are those yeah. did i see goats did you say goats nine goats yeah nine goats. we have an enclosure um right. we call the misfits and it's kind of a we've got the sheep and the goats and the alpacas are in there oh, cool. and sometimes the pigs go in with them and yeah it's fun that's awesome all right now do we do you sell the wool from the sheep do you take care i mean what what's the where do the animals fall in terms of utility and ultimately being used for anything well their their job here is to be sanctuary animal they there there's nothing expected of them now we do shear the sheep because why not you have have to to. that yeah in fact we do it once a year we were considering twice a year for a couple of them Uh because the the weather you know they start growing and it gets so hot but yeah we shear um the sheep we have a gal Blue Mist Farm, mm-hmm. um, they come out and she does the shearing and then she processes the wool for us. And actually we have little um, felting kits to make little gnomes and little uh-huh. sheep and alpacas from their wool. So we do have those available for sale. And so you're selling the kit. Mm-hmm. Isn't that great? Yeah. With instructions road, on how to make with a little, oh, on on how how to how to make little alpaca. Exactly. <laughs> and they're really cute. The alpacas, some of them come out a little Right, right. We did a thing with the staff and, and everybody got to come out and do um, one of the animals. And, but it's really fun. Um, and it's really neat to be able to take, you know, yeah. the, the wool from our crew and do that. Um, down the road, we plan to open to the public and potentially do events and things like mm-hmm. a, a class on the right. felting and things like that. And we do have bees, I forgot. Oh. So like we're, our numbers are far beyond 100 if we right. count our beehives. Um, and so we're now harvesting honey and selling that as and well. And are those rescue bees, like people that can no longer take care of the bees, or you start those on your own? Our first batch we started on our own, but we are in the process of rescuing eight more hives to bring and add to, to our colony. And that's from beekeepers that can't do it. You're mm-hmm. not going out to get wild hives. And no, 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 <laughs> no, we're okay. not. No, we're not. Um, well, so we have uh, 
uh, we've got really an eclectic staff here. Right. We have some, you know, the young crew and then the, the older crew. Um, we have an air traffic controller who works here and he's also a beekeeper. Oh. Um, so he doesn't work here full time, obviously. He's working at SeaTac and comes here and, and shares his time with the animals and he is in charge of our bees. Um, and so someone reached out to him about these hives. They could no longer, they developed an allergy and um, so they didn't, they were unable to care for them. So we're going to get them here. That's awesome. Yeah. Rescue bees. Rescue bees. That's awesome. Who knew? Who knew uh, it was a rescue <laughs> bee thing? But yeah, so we're not like sending our guy right. out to get hives out right, of right. people's right. You're not, eaves and things like that. Right. That's okay, not. Okay, fine. And yeah, you're not yeah. out actively seeking bees. I mean, you go no. find horses when you're, when, and then, so what, so the horses just pass and then you find a new horse to replace it. Yeah. And then if we're, if we're able to, so kind of circling back to the foster, yeah. we had, um, a family on the island reached out last year and they were leaving for a much colder climate mm -hmm. um, and they had four mules who would survive and a very old mare who would not um, but we had no space someone else was asking us to place their horse and they had two stalls and we said how about instead of we take your horse we'll foster dawn she'll come and live with you we'll take care of everything for you and so now we were able to solve two placement problems by using our foster program and so Don and actually um, our boss goes over there twice a week and cleans the stalls and and helps out and supports the fosters on the island and so they sold their place and whoever bought it knew there were two foster animals well no the the people who sold moved yeah, right across the state right. and it was another property on the island that wanted to that needed to place their oh horse. got it got and it, got so it. we took the first one from the moving and they were okay and, with that they just couldn't handle the upkeep yeah, yeah. There was a lot of travel, and they'd had two two horses there. You need to have these animals need to have right, some companions. Companion. Um, so they had sent one of their horses to board, and the other horse was remaining. And so they had requested that we take the horse, and we couldn't. So we right. were able to make that happen. Isn't that great? It's and pretty so, great. And now you are fostering two animals. Yeah, yeah. We had. Um, Two animals come to us, um, a horse and a donkey, and one was in pretty poor health and didn't make it. Um, and so at that time, we had another mini horse here who wasn't really gelling with the pack very well with his herd. Um, and so the day that my donkey was found to be alone, we brought him over and they were a perfect match. Oh, and, isn't that great? Yeah, and so they hang out in my backyard and we're down there with them every day. and very happy and healthy and it's great it's a little quirk of vashon that your backyard can host two <laughs> i know <laughs> donkeys right yeah uh, but i would think a, a good percentage of houses here could host animals right I mean, absolutely yeah i mean there's yeah, a plenty the of horse, people the horse thing horse is a little not. more challenging yeah. um but we actually we don't really foster the farm animals mm -hmm. um we had one pig come in in pretty bad shape last year and our boss fostered her for a while at her home and now she's here on the property with mm -hmm. us. Um, but we have, we have a select number of animals, so not everyone here, even the horses, they're not all available for foster. Right. Um, but there are, there are a handful here. That's great. Yeah. Very, very cool. All right. And where does the funding come from for this? Um, we are privately funded. Mm -hmm. um, we are a nonprofit. Um, so we do fundraising and, and take donations and um support the private funding that yeah, way you have the runner-up mayor we have the runner-up mayor That's yeah it. he was very disappointed to I'll, have lost I'll but bet. Okay. he's so social he we were at the car show he came out for a couple oh, hours at the nice. car show last week i think we've got an event with the fire he's department. not contesting he's not fake. no he he's accepted not it fake electors nothing. no 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 okay, no, no he wasn't this. no he it's on the up and up but he's just going to show up and call himself the unofficial, unofficial. okay that's good yeah that's good <laughs> That's good. Very good. That works. Yeah. As long as he's not, you know, overthrowing the capital and no, he's okay. No. All right, good. <laughs> All right, and and then what? So when the, when it comes time for them to to pass on to go, do you then sell them for? No. Me, they no, just no, go no. get buried in the they, property. Yeah, they have actually. I could show you our memorial wall. Uh -huh. They live here forever. So we. It's a, it's a tough day. It's been okay. a while. It's been a while since we've lost anyone. The last one um, was last March. Mm. Um, and it was really tough. But we have the vet come here. They have, yeah. you know, a, a really full day of love and care. And we support them yeah. as they pass. And then we have their ashes brought back in, in oh, the box special. here. That's yeah. great. 
That's yeah. fabulous. Our, our last one is Clydesdale, and so we've got his horseshoe saved, and his horseshoe oh, is, that is enormous. massive, and it's over there on the wall. That's great. Yeah. Excellent. Well, what else should people know? And, you know, I mean, are there tours that you're giving? Is it open to the public? How does that work? Yeah, so not yet. We've got a few major projects that we mm -hmm. have to get done before we can open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, the horses came in long before this place was finished. Mm -hmm. um, so we are actively working and caring for the animals. But when the, those projects are done, we will open to the public. Mm -hmm. The plan at this point is to do um, one day a month open for tours. And mm -hmm. so there'll be signups for that. Um, hopefully in the spring. That'll, that'll be happening. We are open for volunteers. I run the volunteer program. Mm -hmm. So we, um, we invite people to come and join us here. We have a very small commitment requirement. We ask for a three month commitment with two hour shifts twice a month and that's it. So really 12 hour total over the three month period. Mm -hmm. Obviously, coming in and working more often, you'll build relationships with the animals and get access to more, more increasing engagement with the animals. But um, so that's another way people can participate. Yeah. And how many staff you got? Um, we have about twenty-one active farmhand, um, tractor, uh, water staff, canine caretakers. Is that everybody? I think that's everybody on the list. And then the support staff, the leadership team. Yeah. That's an enormous, this is an enormous enterprise. It's this a is. big production. And, um, you know, the, we're really lucky that we are able to have paid staff working here. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of sanctuaries, a lot of rescues, it's all based on volunteers. Um, that's a lot harder to run a facility like this with volunteers because of the specific care and needs of the animals mm -hmm. and and the it, number of animals and I mean, the number could, of there's animals. no way could you run i mean you know it's what you yeah. couldn't run a volunteer hundred animal sanctuary on vashon right on volunteers no, not a chance not a chance like i i'm putting out stuff for volunteers all the time I, we've I mean, got a great team of volunteers but, but not, you know i get maybe six eight maybe 12 hours a week right. of support and we, we have very high standards here for the health of the animals. With um, horses, their feet are so important. And so we clean, every stall gets cleaned every day. Every day, no matter what. If there's four of us here, there's 14. So yeah, it's really important to have the paid staff. And I love the fact that we get to provide employment for people yeah. on the island. You know, a living wage, it's, just uh, it's great. great. It's, uh, yeah. it's really, really very, very, very cool. And great location yeah it's beautiful it's wonderful <laughs> we also yeah. offer compost oh i have almost 100 animals creating mountains okay. ongoing mountains so i always like to put that out there too um i have people email me and mm. i've got a sign up list and it's 20 bucks for a truckload and my tractor guy will fill your truck however big your truck is that's what you get and for is 20 it, bucks is it uh, uh, aged and processed or is it just raw shit it is well it's aged okay. for, I mean we've got I right. can take some video of the mountains right. out there okay but it is uh, they're giant mountains right. we don't have the capacity to turn it right um, but you can also take some video of the garden right. and see how amazing I'll bet it's it does and I I've got um, people who've been coming for two years never had any complaints this all right here is our compost here on top of our um, our outside entry area as well um, no weed seeds oh that's great yeah oh, well, that'll um, be and there's a spring for sure exactly for yeah and we also do you can come fill up a couple buckets we ask for a five dollar donation oh, that's for great. Buckets, right. so. i'll just have my daughter bring some home there oh absolutely yeah no she'll staff them. staff get get free okay. truckloads <laughs> as much as you need right, I'll bet yeah. this is free. <laughs> it's kind of a never-ending supply right, i'll bet yeah yeah so yeah, we're happy to, animals, right? yeah oh, we're that's, happy that's to move awesome. it and no chickens, no rescue chickens. Either. No, we don't have any birds. It's really hard to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. um, when we've had reports of the, you know, the right. cougar on the island, right. we've closed up some of our smaller animals at right. night to make sure that they're safe. But trying to keep birds, it would be too, It'd be crazy. too much. Yeah. yeah. All right, very cool. Anything else that people should know? Anything else you want people to know about the sanctuary? Anything else that people oh, gosh. you're promoting? Yeah, right now, I think we've covered most of it. Cool. Um, I'm really excited to share and let people see it. I and think it's I can't uh, wait for cool. us to open to the public. Um, but anytime there's a, a community event, like come and find us. Templeton Great. might be out there. Other animals will be for sure. Very cool. Yeah. Yay, Laura. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. 
All right. Well, that was fun. Totally fun interview. It's a great time to be there. Got to see my daughter at work. Um, it's just, it's a great, it's a great joint, you know, and you can set up a tour and if you wanted to come over, they could, you know, they set them up every now and then. So you could do that. Um, you could certainly do a drive-by. And if you got questions about living on the island, let me know. That's what I'm here for. I'd love to help you with anything you got from building on the island to moving to the island to selling on the island, anything you need to know. Okay. That's what I'm here for. Uh, make sure you message me here, subscribe, like, share this channel with your friends, and I will see you next time on Living on Vashon. Aaron Hendon with Christine and Company over to EXP. Peace out, people.